G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and today I'm going to step you through every step and process of building your very own end-to-end -end journey in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So I've gone ahead and designed a sample journey for us to build, so let me take you through what it looks like. We'll start off at the top here with our customer who's going to become a subscriber by visiting our sign up form on the cloud page. And when they do, the sign up form will have some information such as their first name, last name and email address they fill it out, they can then press submit. And when they do, that submit script will trigger and it's going to fire them into our journey. Of course, on that cloud page, we'll also show them a success or fail message. Now the API trigger is gonna join them into my journey here, my welcome journey. Now the first step of the welcome journey is to suppress them from other communications while they receive our welcome communications on the journey. So we'll suppress them in a data extension and straight away, we'll then send them email number one. We'll then wait one day to make sure that they've got themselves familiar with our platform before sending out email number two. We'll then wait for three days before checking to see if the user has clicked a link in email number two. Now, if they have not clicked the link we've asked them to, we're gonna send them a reminder email too. If they have clicked it, then we'll go straight through to the join function here, joining those who received email number two reminder or who clicked the first one, joining up and then exiting the journey. Now, before they exit, they're gonna be unsuppressed from that marketing list. You can see here, it will unsuppress them from the welcome suppressions. And so that's what our journey looks like for today. Let's now step through and build the components of our cloud page with a HTML form, some SSJS or M script to trigger our journey. We also need to make a journey itself with a entry source of API, some data extensions and some emails. So let's take a look. So I'll start off today in our cloud pages and where we can build our sign up form. So in cloud pages, I've got my collections. I'll jump into a collection here. Let's build ourselves a brand new cloud page. I'm going to use the landing page type. That's going to be our default cloud page. I'll call this one sign up form. Oops, sign up form and we'll go next. We use a blank template to make it nice and simple and go save. Now for this cloud page, you wouldn't normally do this for a sign-up process, but we will for today, just to showcase how you can make a sign-up form work and trigger that journey API. So as my page here loads, and there we are, we're ready to go. Let's make ourselves a nice, simple sign-up form. Now I use this content block here. I might just go up into my default view and drag and drop in a HTML block to make it nice and easy. I'm not gonna use Smart Capture. We'll do this all using HTML. Now for HTML today, we're going to want to build a form. So we can jump onto Google and find ourselves a HTML form. You can see here the W3Schools option for HTML forms. And straight away on our examples, here is a great sample form for us to use. So if I scroll down, I think we'll find a few examples and here's one here. So let's take this code and drop it straight into our cloud page and see what it looks like. That's a pretty good start. Now for our first name and last name, let's make them on the same line. So I'll remove those line breaks. We've got first name, last name, and what else do we want? Well, we're probably gonna want email address. So let's go label for email. It's gonna be the email, and the input will be text, and the ID will be email, and the name will be email, All right? So that's our email address to be put in. And what else should we put for this marketer? Well, it's gonna be a marketing subscription so how about some marketing flags? Let's start off by doing two more, oops, put two more fields down. We're using, of course, the input text types for these ones. So we're gonna have our two input for our preferences. Now, how about we do for our inputs, actually, we'll use a checkbox for our inputs. And do we have any checkboxes on here? We have radio boxes, but do we have checkbox? Here we are, checkbox for a form which of course look like that. So let's use some checkboxes. We'll go input checkbox and paste that into our form. All right, so how about we make, rather than ID, let's go pref1 and the value of, how about we do cats and dogs? Actually, that's a good one, we'll do cats and dogs. So for the pref1 value, I like cats, there we are. And of course the same thing can be applied for our next preference, which will be, I love dogs. So go dogs for preference two. And preference two is I like dogs. 
Okay, so now we have first and last name, email address, and a preference of I like cats or I like dogs, or both or neither. So let's try out our code to see how it works. We need one more thing though for our form to work. We need a submit button. So we need an input type for our submit button, and look, here it is here. Input type submit. So let's copy that into our form submit, perfect. Now for our form submission type, there are two ways you can do forms. There is a get request and a post request. We're gonna to wanna to use the post request because otherwise if we do a get request, it's gonna be uh, putting those values in the URL. So if we scroll through our form types, these are form attributes. We have of course our action and I'm looking for our method. Here we are here, our form method should be method post to do a post method. So let's go into our form and make sure it's a method of post. Perfect. Our first name, last name, email address, dogs, cats and dogs, and submit. This should submit data back onto our page. So we can try it out by going done editing. We'll save and publish this screen. So let's just make sure that our form is looking good. Hopefully it renders with no errors and looking good. So I'll go publish. Perfect, and then we'll try our link out. All right, so here's our form. So we can say first name is Cam, last name is Cam, email is Cam at email, and I like cats and dogs. Submit. Okay, good, so the form does work, it does submit, but as you can see, nothing's happened because the form's been told to do nothing after we press submit. So let's go back into our code and add a few more things. So in order for us to get the values that have been posted back onto our page, we have to use an AMP script function to get the posted values. So we can jump on to Google, we can type in something like our AMP script request parameter. You can see here we have some documentation on the AMP script guide, as well as some help forms on Stack Exchange, and my video there of course as well. But today we're gonna to be looking for the developer Salesforce documentation, and we can see straight away how it works. So we can request parameter, which will get for us a value that has been posted via a form. Perfect. So let's see how this works. Well, the usage here is a bit basic. It's missing some functions, but we can use this just the same. We'll copy the request parameter function there. Go into our cloud page, and let's now listen for those values at the top of our form. So we'll go percent percent. We're going to do ourselves a nice AMP script block, just like that. And in this block, we're going to be listening to some things. So we can say, let's set the value of at f name to be equal to the uh, request parameter for f name, for our first name. And we can do the same thing down for our last name and of course our email address. Now try and do the same thing as well for our two preference values. Of course we have pref1 and pref2. So there is all of our values. Now, if these things are all set, then we can output them onto our uh, page here. So we can now do, let's just do some quick testing and I'll say output values, just a little line break here. At the top of our screen, we'll output those values. So we'll say, uh, what we're we gonna do, we'll do first name, last name first. So we'll say first name equals percent percent V. And we're going to output the F name value, just like that. So we'll try this out first and see what it looks like. So we've got our AMS script listing for those requested parameters. And if we have a first name, we're gonna spit it out. Let's give it a whirl. Go schedule and publish. And let's see what the AMS script thinks. Aha, so straight away we can see that our output value for F name is equal to blank. And that's good because there is no value there yet. So go publish. And hopefully our page publishes. Perfect, and now let's try it out for ourselves. So here's our page, FM equals zero, great. We'll put cam, and then I'll go submit. Great, F name equals cam. So we are successfully getting that posted value. How good. Well, let's now jump back into our cloud page and modify some more code. Since we know that the first name works, let's do the same thing now for the remaining values to make sure that they're all coming through properly. So we're going to do where last name is last name, where email is email, where pref1, which was cats, and where pref2, which is dogs. Save and we'll publish that one as well. And hopefully when we now test this form, we'll see all five values coming through onto our page. 
All right, and there's our testing script. We'll go publish, great, click, and here we go. Our five blank values. So let's go cam, cam, cam at email. And I do like cats and I do like dogs. Submit. Great, so I've got those values coming through. Now what happens if I try and submit again? Well, it goes blank because all these fields are blank. So let's try one more. I'll say cam in the top. I'll leave the bottom one. I'll go cam at email. And I'm just gonna type, I like cats and not dogs. I'll go submit. Okay, so if I don't tick dogs, it doesn't come through with a value. If I don't type in a last name, I also do not get a value. All right, good to know. So with that working so far, let's now build out our function, now store these values so we can post them into our data extension in our Journey Builder API. Okay, so back on our cloud page now, let's go back into our code and let's have a look at what we've got so far. We have all our values there. We now need to write some functions to process this data and make sure it's ready to submit into our data extensions and into the Journey Builder API. So I'll make another few lines here. We'll keep that top code for now. What we'll do is we'll write out some if statements. So actually I might do it up at the top here in our script code block. So I'm gonna say if something, then something, and if. So we're gonna say if we do have a not empty, and if the first name is not empty, and if not empty email address, that's all we need really, isn't it? We can leave last name. Oh, we'll put last name in too. And if not empty, last name. Okay, so if not empty first name, not empty last name, and not empty email, then we're going to say this is a valid payload. Because you can choose not to select those two preferences and therefore not get those values sent through. So what we'll do now is we'll say this is our success message. We want an else statement, which will be our fail statement. So if successful, we're going to want to do some things. First of all, we can make a message. So let's go set at message equals thanks, you are now subscribed. Great. However, if you failed, then we're going to say, oops, there was an error. I'm going to leave it as that. Now, if you are subscribed, we probably don't want to show you the form again. So perhaps we'll say set at show form equals zero because we don't want to show the form again. However, if you are receiving an error, then we want you to see the form once more. So above this, we'll set show form is equal to one to say that yes, we want to show the form unless you're a success and then we don't show the form. Which means down here, I have to make another statement. So I can make an AMP script code block and I can say if the show form is equal to one, then we want to show the form. And then we'll put end if to end that statement. So now the form should only show if the show form equals one, which we have there, perfect. Now, of course, if there was an error, we probably don't want to have to retype out that form all over again. So let's put these values, not as output values here, but as values back in the input. And we can have some predefined values for these inputs. So I can say at the end of the uh, input um, tag here, I can say value equals, and I can put a value in. And by default, this value will show up in the form. There you go, three A's, three A's. So I could say that the first name field will have the default value of the first name value. I can do the same thing down here again for the remaining values. So I can copy that value statement and put one there and the same for email, making sure I use the L name and the email values. Great. You can probably leave these unticked for now though, because you can of course retick them again once you resubmit. But for now we should so show those values once you submit them. So let's try it out. I'll leave the output values there for now, just so we can see what happens. I'll remove our success and fail. Make sure I just put them into proper comment blocks. There we go. And we now have our preferences. So let's try it out. Go schedule and publish. 
and let's see if we can now make it work as a test of a success and a test of a fail. It's looking good and we'll go publish. All right, we'll click onto our page and here it is, of course, no values just yet. But of course our first name has to be populated. Our last name is populated and let's not populate the email address, we'll leave that one for now. And I'll just tick dogs. And I'll go submit. Aha, so it failed as you can still see the form and it's left the values in there for me. Great. Let's now fill out the form by putting in some more values. And this one like cats. And if I click submit now, it should make the form disappear because it was a success. Perfect, the form's gone. So, so far our script is working. So we'll jump back onto our cloud page now. Let's have a look at our next step. Now we wanna process our data and put it into a data extension. So our next step is to make a data extension to put this data into. Okay, so over in Email Studio, in our data extensions, I've got myself a brand new welcome journey uh, data extension folder. We can make ourselves our brand new data extension. So we'll go create, let's make ourselves a new standard data extension and go okay. We'll make this one from new and this will be our welcome journey DE. Send a little testable and okay. Now as with all data extensions, we should probably have a subscriber key which will be a text primary key. We're gonna want our email address, which will of course be an email type, which should not be nullable, perfect. We're gonna want first name, we're gonna want last name, and we're gonna want uh, cats and dogs as our two preferences. Now because the preferences were true or false, we'll make these Boolean fields as true and false, just like that. But of course you can leave them as blank as well if you don't want to set a preference. And for our first name and last name, let's make them 150 in length and they can be nullable just in case. That's pretty good for a data extension. We'll of course jump in here and make sure the subscriber key relates on subscriber key, looking good. And we'll go create. With our data extension created, we can now test with a little simple AM script to make sure we've got our structure correct. So I'll copy the name of my data extension and we'll drop that one straight into my cloud page. So on success, we want to of course show the success message, no, not show form. We do want to insert the data into our data extension just to test it out. If we do this properly, we are going to be using the journey API, so we won't need this step. But for now, it's a good test to make sure our data is ready to go. So we're going to want some AM script now to put that data in. If I jump back onto my marketing cloud documentation, I'm going to go up to my data extensions and let's go, I think it's one of the insert or upsert. We'll try upsert DE first. Okay, this is to be used at time of email send, so we'll try upsert data, which I think is our better one for landing pages. Perfect. So upsert data. We want the string for the name of the DE. We want the number of columns to build our where clause. If we're doing a match, we're going to want the columns to build the where clause on, the values to be used, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's put those values in. We'll take our sample data here for upsert and let's go back onto our cloud page. So we're going to set at records equals upsert data. This does return back the records changed, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's how this one works. Function returns number of rows affected, perfect. So we do want to see that uh, one row was affected by it. So we are going to do a upsert data on welcome journey. Just like that. We're going to do this on one row and that's going to be subscriber key is equal to subscriber key. Now we haven't actually captured a subscriber key value in this data set. We have to make one. Now of course if you were doing this properly in real, you would actually be using a database function to generate your own royalty ID or customer ID. But for today we can use something like a GUID. So if we have a look at our M script function for a GUID, we should have access to can't use that one. I can scroll in here, encryption GUID, here we are. And we can use a GUID to make ourselves a brand new string. So we'll make that our subscriber key value. So back on my cloud page, we're gonna say where subscriber key is gonna be a GUID to make ourselves a brand new key. And now of course we have to put in all the fields we're going to upsert. So if we have a look at our data extension, let's make sure we get all the right field names. Okay, so we have our data extension. So we'd start with subscriber key, which we already have from our lookup. And our next field is going to be email address. 
So I'll copy that value, go back into our cloud page and start putting in our columns. So email address is next, and it's gonna be email address will be email. So set email and email, perfect. We'll do a few more, we're gonna do email, we're gonna need first name, oops, comma. We're gonna need first name, last name, and our two preferences. So first name, last name, and two preferences. All right, let's get those values. It's first name, so email address is first name, which will be F name. We then want last name, which will go here, with L name. We then want our two preferences. So our preferences will be called cats and dogs. So we've got cats and dogs. Cats being our preference one and dogs being preference two. The problem is, is that the values for cats and dogs is the text cats and dogs. And unfortunately, those are Boolean fields in our data extension. So we're gonna have to do some data manipulation. So back on our cloud page, rather than using the values of pref1 and pref2, let's make them the values of cats and dogs. Let's set some values for cats and dogs up here. So what we'll say is, if the value of, let's use our function here in fact. So if pref1 not empty, pref1, which is cats, then, and if of course, we are going to set the value of cats, set cats to be equal to true or one. Now if of course the request parameter for pref1 is empty, else we'll be setting the value of cats to be equal to zero or false. Perfect. We'll do the same thing now for pref2. So we'll copy that straight down and say for pref2, we'll be setting the value of dogs. Great. Now we'll leave that. Of course, we don't need pref1 and 2 now, so I'll drop those preference 1 and 2s. And in fact, we even just use dogs and cats. Just like that. All right, so there is now our values that are coming in. We've got our records here to upset our data to our welcome journey data extension on subscriber key, email address, first name, last name, cats and dogs. Good, good, good. All we need now, of course, is our welcome success message or fail message. So down the bottom here, we'll go BR, BR, and let's go. Sempsent equals V. Let's output our message. All right. Let's try out our code. We'll go schedule and publish. All right. So the form is rendered. Oops, there was an error, of course, because there is blanks right now. That's okay. Let's now publish our page. Published. Great. We'll click on our link. And here's our form. So let's try it out. As of right now, here is our data extension with zero records. Check it out for ourselves. Loading and hopefully it shows zero records, but let's fill out our form. So I'll say first name is cam1, last name is cam2, email is cam at email.com, it's a valid email address, and it's like cats and not dogs. We'll go submit, still loading data, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that's got no records. So I'll go back into my welcome journey. Let's have a look, yep, no records. Let's now submit it. Okay, submit. Thanks, you're now subscribed. Good, and there's our values. Hopefully, that kind of data extension, it's got zero records right now, but one record, awesome. So we have one record coming through, and we did like cats and not dogs. Confirm, did like cats and not dogs, good. So we have confirmed that we can make our data work in our payload structure. All we have to do now is trigger our journey API to add it into Journey Builder. Okay, so we've jumped now into our journey builder. Let's start off by making our entry event so we can fire that API into our journey. To start with, we'll jump up into our events and we'll make ourselves an entry event, an entry source. Now I'll go a new event. Let's choose ourselves a new API event. I'll go next. This one's gonna be our welcome API. No description needed and we'll leave the definition key as it is. And we'll go next. Now what data extension do we put the data into? Well, lucky for us, we've already got one. So I'll go into my folders, 
I've got in my demo here our nice welcome journey. And there's our welcome journey DE. So I'll choose that DE and I'll go next. Now for our filter, do we filter anyone who comes into this data extension? Well, no, we're not going to. We're not capturing email marketing flags or anything else that you might do normally. This is just a sample, so we'll leave these blank for now. So I'll go next and I'll go summary. Yep, looking pretty good and done. And there is our welcome API entry event. So with our event created, we need to do a few more things. According to our fire the event API call, we're gonna to have to fire an API using our REST API. Now the REST API requires a key. So we have to jump into our marketing cloud and make ourselves a new key. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open myself up a new window in marketing cloud. I'm gonna jump into my setup and make myself a brand new key. So into setup. And we'll jump over to our left hand side panel. Now I have got another video that goes through this step as well. And I'll show you how it works. We'll jump into our apps and our install packages. And then at the top, we're gonna to create ourselves a brand new package. So let's go new at the top and we'll make ourselves a new package. This one's gonna be our welcome journey API. This, oops. This API is used for the welcome journey. Always make sure you make some description so that you know what the API has been used for and so you can tell your colleagues where the API is if they have to go and change it. So this API is for our welcome journey. Let's go save. And straight away, here is our brand new welcome package. Now, at the moment, it can't do much. We have to make some components. So we're gonna add a new component. For this one, we're gonna be doing a marketing cloud uh, App integration, so I'll leave it as API integration. We'll then go next. Now for integration, we're gonna use server to server. So I click on server to server integration and go next. And now we have to give it the scopes. Now for the scopes, there's a really cool trick you can do to make sure you have the right things ticked for your needs. By jumping into my documentation for the post of the interaction event, I can copy the name of the event here. I can scroll down on my APIs all the way down here down to my REST API permissions. I can click on that, go Control F and then paste the name of the interaction event and there is my interaction event. It tells me I have to use the list subscribers read in the contacts read contact data. So list subscribers read contact data, list subscribers read contact data, contacts list subscribers read. Good, I've got that one there. Back to my REST API and go to my next match, post interactions, there it is journey read in the journey builder access view journey read okay let's find our journey read all right so if i two there i'll just check read and read for automations and for contacts back in here and we'll flip between so it's this one and 1018 1022 yep read 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 that's both of them perfect so that's our correct scopes so back in our setup we'll now save those scopes and done, there is our key done. So now we have our client ID, client secret, and of course our authorization, all with the correct scopes for our entry event. So our next step of course is gonna be to call this entry event. It's all set up now. We don't have a journey yet actually, we should build a journey first. So we'll go back to Journey Builder, let's make ourselves a quick journey. So in Journey Builder, I'll swing over here to our create a new journey. Let's make ourselves a multi-step journey and go create. Okay, and with our journey created, let's give it a nice brand new name. We'll go welcome journey, just for consistency. All right, and of course we do want to use our API event. So I'll drag and drop that in, API event, and there it is right there. I'll go select, that's our event, no filtering required and done. Good, oh, there's our event. We have to make some steps though for our journey. So let's go down. And what I'll do is I'm going to use our update contact. It's the easiest one to use. So I'll drag that in. Let's make an update contact to select that same entry data extension. And it's a nice simple trick just to make sure that your journey is working to update that source data extension. So I'll go to data extensions, public and exercises, and we want that welcome journey. Oops, demos, welcome. There it is there. Okay, so we have our data extension and we're gonna change the value just to make things easy. We'll change first name to working. 
All right, and summary and done. So now it's gonna update that contact value just to make sure they are in the journey. We'll of course wait for just a minute and go done. Now for our journey settings, we have our data extension with email address, great. And we'll do re-entry any time just for good measure. Done, and that should be our journey ready to go. So let's validate our journey to make sure it's all looking good. Perfect. So let's go save and we'll activate our journey. So now we have a live journey with a live API endpoint. Return to journey. There's our definition key ready to use. Perfect. So we can now try and fire this from our cloud page. So back into our cloud pages and let's now add that API event into our success section of our code. So we can see here we've got our else statement for fail and our success statement for having a correct first name, last name, and email address. Now we're not going to do this upsert data. We've already tested that and we know it's working. So we can comment that section out. We don't need that now. What we do need though is to call the API to fire the event. Now the good news is I do have this ready to go. So over on my blog, I have a quick start token for our SSJS and AMP script. Now I do like the SSJS one better, so I'm gonna try that one out for today. So I can see here I've got my script section, so I can pick up my script section just like this and go straight back into my cloud page. Now I am in the middle of an AMP script code block, but that's okay. I can close off my code block and then open it up once again just below and let's then put in our SSJS. Okay, so we're gonna to want to load in our payload here, which is our client credentials with our client ID and client secret. So back onto my journey API, my client ID, paste that in and my client secret. And don't worry, I'm gonna delete these uh, API keys since I'm done here, so don't try and copy them. I've got my auth URL, so I go back in my setup here and get my auth URL, copy that and I can put my auth URL in just here. Perfect. So I've now got all the actions that I need in my filled out section. It's going to request the token from the V2 tokens. It's going to put in my payload that I've put in above. It's going to get the auth URL from here and get the results. Now if the results are a 200 status code, that means it's exceeded. I'm going to JSON pass the response, get the access token and my rest URL. Now with all that done, I should have what I need to then make a call. So I'm gonna write out the response to make sure it works first, but I can probably go below this and start making my API call now into my journey. To do this, I'm gonna to want to use the post function in SSJS. I've got here my SSJS uh, syntax guide and my post function. I can see this one here is the http.post, the very same function I used above to make the API call. So with my documentation in front of me, I can just quickly copy this example and build it out for myself. So let's take all this code here for now and drop it into our cloud page and work our way through it. Okay, so our URL is gonna be the place that we send the API to. Now we do know from our documentation, if we go back a step, it is that post interaction event. We can see it's gonna be our REST API followed by the interaction events just like that. So I should be able to go back onto my cloud page here and I can say the URL will be that there, but it's added onto my rest URL. So I can say URL is equal to rest URL plus that endpoint. The content type is gonna be a JSON payload. So I'll check out my documentation. I'm pretty sure we can do it as a JSON payload rather than doing it as a text type. I think I've got there, application JSON, great content type and just put it in straight there. There we are. Don't need that section. Now my payload itself has to be the payload that it specifies in the interaction documentation, which looks a little bit like this. Okay, that's my payload. So let's pull this out and we'll put that into my cloud page. So payload's gonna be equal to something on the lines of this. All right, now our data is gonna be all the values in our data extension. So our first step is to make sure we have all of the field names in our payload. So let's copy this down a few times to make sure we have all the five fields. And we're gonna need all the fields that we had in that data extension, which is just here. So we're gonna need the subscriber key. We're gonna need email address. We're gonna need first name and last name. 
and of course cats. Oops, and one more. Dogs. All right, there's our values. Now I subscribe a key, and all the values are going to be the same as the ones here. But of course, to do this, we're going to have to get the values in from Emscript into our SSJS. Now, to do that, we can use a function, which is the get variable function. So, I believe it goes a little bit like this. I should be able to go var and say at sub key. Oops, don't need the at. So I can say var sub key is equal to, and I can say variable dot get value. I think it's what it is. In brackets, and I specify the M script name of that value. Now the value for subscriber key I did have originally as GUI down here, so I might have to set that earlier on. So back up here I might say set at sub key equals GUID. That way I can quickly pick up that get value, which is just here. That's gonna be my sub key value. All right, so get value sub key will be sub key. I can keep going down and getting the other values as well. So my email address, of course, get value email is gonna be at email. And get f name is f name. You can see here it's a nice easy process to keep those variables all the same. We want our cats and our dogs. Perfect. So then we have those values come into our SSJS. We can now use them in our payload here. So the scrubber key will be subkey. So I can drop out that text and make it subkey. The email address will be email. F name will be F name, L name, straight up there. Making sure, of course, there's no quotation marks in our value statements because they are going to be values coming in from SSJS, not text. So just like that. And that should be our payload. All right. With our payload done, what headers do we need? So again, back onto my documentation. We have only one header, that's the authorization bearer token. So the header of authorization, so I go back over here into my header names, oh, my header names authorization, and the header value is gonna be bearer token. So I copy the word bearer, I'll go bearer space, and then plus to concatenate in my access token, which I've set here from my response from the earlier API call. So bearer plus token. All right, so I've now got my header name, header values, perfect. My payload coming in, perfect. The application JSON as my content type. And of course the URL is gonna be the URL events here. In fact, I might even just copy this one straight down and put it just there. Okay, so we'll check our last few things and our contact key of course should be our subscriber key. So we'll place subscriber key there. In our payload, we also want our definition key to not be the default key, but the definition from our journey. So we can go back into our journey builder. There's our event definition key there. So I click on the tile and copy that text, pasting it back in to our event definition key, just like that. Uh, we've got our payload now. I think we actually used payload already. So I'll call this one payload A. And of course, payload A, which should be stringified. My bad, we've got to stringify that payload. So we can use our stringify function like that, payload A. The header name as authorization, header value as bearer access token, perfect. We'll then output the result to make sure it's all working as we expected. So that's looking pretty good. I reckon let's give it a go. So we'll schedule and publish. And hopefully now our sign up page should have a working form, which will capture our name, email and preferences. And then on a successful submission, it's going to send that data into the Journey Builder API to add that record into our journey. So hopefully, once we publish this page, we'll see no errors on our page. All right, looking good with no errors. So we'll go publish. And page has been published. We'll click on our text and let's try it out. So we'll go cam1, cam2, email will be cam at cam.com. And I like cats and dogs. And let's go submit. 
Okay, well that can happen sometimes. So we'll jump back into our clown page and have a look at what we could have done wrong. Straight away, it could be my bullion fields here because everything else is looking pretty okay. Got my stringify payload. So let's try changing from my numerics into a true false phase instead. So I'll say true for one. And of course we'll do false for false. All right, we'll set those ones in instead, which hopefully means we'll get those billion flags put through into our cats and dogs values. Good, setting cats and dogs and last names. All right, let's give that a go now. So we'll schedule and publish one more time. All right, ready and publish. So one more time, let's try it out. Here's our form. So cam1, cam2, something at cam.com. And I like cats and dogs. Submit. Awesome. So thank you. You are now subscribed. So hopefully we'll have our new subscriber going in, which has these values. So let's go down and check it out. Back in our cloud page, we've got here our call. So we should have seen our result calls coming through. And I think we'll see them here. There's our output results at the back. So it did fire. Let's go now into our journey builder and check it out. So hopefully we'll see in the entry events for our journey. Hey, one and one, perfect. Go back to our welcome journey. And hopefully we have one ripple that's gone through. Now remember, we did have this update contact activity here, which was modifying the records details to say that it was done. So working is the first name value. So let's now jump into our data extensions. We had one record originally. We'll jump back now into our folder. Now there's two records. Cool. Check it out. Two records. And do we have the first name is working? Perfect. So we've now triggered that record to go into our journey. Okay, so we've now confirmed that we can use our cloud page to enter a new record into this journey as a sign-up process. The next step is for us to now build out our journey so that our subscribers will receive those welcome emails and the wait conditions between them as well. So our first step is going to be to make ourselves a new version. So we've got version one running here. Let's go new version to make ourselves a new draft. We're going to start to build out this journey. So if you remember back on our journey design, we were going to enter through our cloud page. Once they're in the journey, they'll be suppressed from emails using our suppression data extension here. We then send email one, waiting one day, sending email two, waiting three days, checking if they clicked the email, if they have proceed, but if they haven't, we'll send email two reminder, and then of course unsuppress them and exit the journey. So let's jump back into our journey builder now, into our new version two. Let's start to build out this journey. So first thing we'll do of course is remove that existing contact piece. We don't need that one. We'll put a new one in for our suppression piece. So we'll scroll down and we're going to suppress the record. We'll then send email one, so do an email like that, then waiting for one day. So I'll change my one minute up to one day. Go okay. We'll go send email two. We're gonna wait for three days. Days three, oops, three. Then of course we wanna to check to see if they've engaged in that email. So the engagement split we'll do will be a engagement split activity, which we'll drag and drop on. We're going to be looking back on that email, which we haven't built yet. So we can't really do much more here for now. What we can do is we will have another email get sent if they don't engage. We of course then wait another three days, just like that. And then we'll rejoin these journeys together. So we'll go down here to our join action and we'll join this activity back to there. Perfect, now I'll change this wait condition down to just one minute, so they exit quickly. And of course, then they exit the journey. So oh, one more step, sorry, we want to unsuppress them. So our unsuppression thing here, which we'll fill out in a second, and then we exit. So again, let's go wait and move that down to one minute. Perfect, there is our journey diagram ready to go. All we need now is a few more things, a data extension to suppress them on, and the email addresses to send. So let's start off by going into our data extensions and we'll make that suppression data extension. So we'll jump back into our email studio in our welcome journey and let's make our suppression data extension. 
And we don't need too many things for this one, luckily. So we can create a new data extension. We call this one Welcome Journey Suppression. Sendable, testable. And for this one, all we really need is just going to be their subscriber key. Like that. As a primary key. And oops, suppress. I have a suppression flag there as a boolean field, so true or false. And then we may put here uh, last modified date, just for good measure. We'll put that as a date value and we'll make it the current date, which we'll set later on anyway. So we'll do subscriber on subscriber key, perfect, so we can join this up easily. Are you being suppressed? Yes or no. And then the last modified date, good one. So we've got create, that's going to be our brand new suppression data extension. There it is there. So what we now do is we can go back into our journey builder, we can plug in our suppression. So once the new record comes in to update our journey here, we're going to move into this activity. So we'll set our data extension up and we'll select our data extension by navigating back to our folder in our journeys here and our welcome journey. And here's our suppression. The suppression data extension selected, we can change the values. So we're going to say that the suppress value is going to be equal to true and the last modified date should be current date time. Done. Summary. So now this will update that record, which we're going to call it suppression. So how about suppress? Yes. There we are. What we can do actually is we can copy this activity by using our copy option here. Choose our suppress yes and go copy. We can actually now drag and drop this activity straight over here to the end. Oops, try again. And there it is. So you can drop that one out. It's going to keep all the same settings, but of course we don't want to suppress yes, we want to suppress no. So we can modify this now. Suppress is false. We are not going to be suppressing them. They're being unsuppressed. Last modify date's current time, of course. And now suppress no. Right, there we are. That's our suppression built. Let's now jump into Content Builder and we'll build out those emails. So we can do two things. We could jump into Content Builder or we can do it right here within our email. So what I'll do is I'll click on the email within our Journey Builder canvas here. We can actually choose to create a brand new email within the canvas. So let's try that out for our first email. We're going to make a new message. All right, and here it is loading up now. So we should be able to make ourselves a brand new template using, of course, a nice blank template. We go next. Call this one Welcome Email One. All right, leave it in Content Builder. No campaign required. UTF coding eight. Great. Then we'll go next. Now for this one, we're not going to do too much for pretty email. You can, of course, check out my other videos on making emails in Marketing Cloud using Content Builder. But for this journey, let's make a nice, simple, personalized email just to show how the data is linked up and how we can personalize this content. So we've got a nice, simple block here. What we might do is just drag in a HTML content block, we'll throw it in, and let's go start off with our subject line. They'll say, welcome. And of course, we don't put in their name. So what we need to do is choose a data extension to put their name in. We are, of course, using our welcome journey data extension. So we'll navigate to our data extensions here, find our welcome journey and not the suppression one. We'll use our journey DE. We'll go OK. And now this knows we're going to be using that data extension. So I can put in first name. Welcome first name to the brand. There we are. Done. We'll leave a pre header for now. Let's just modify our copy. Hi there. We can put in there. First name, uh, their first name, comma, next line. Welcome to the email list. And we'll leave it as that, I think. That's a fine uh, starting email. And then we'll go done. So that's gonna be the simple welcome email. Now, there's no links in this one to click. It's just a very simple welcome email. So with that done, we can actually preview and test this as well. So we can go next and make sure it renders properly against the data extension. So we should see our first name field being populated. And press on my little blue folder here to choose the data extension that I want to search against. So one trick I can do, I can change my list here to data extensions and then go welcome, I'll press search, and there's my welcome DE. Click on it and it goes and finds it straight away for me. Thank you very much, there it is there. So I'll choose my uh, working one that we got in uh, straight away. 
and I'll go select. Perfect, hi there working, because of course we did change that name as a result of them coming into the first journey. But you know what, let's do one more little thing for this. Um, we'll just put a, actually we'll do a sign up for the second one. Yeah, we'll do another link on the next one. So it's looking pretty good. Let's save this email. It is looking pretty good. And now we can go back onto our main view. So with the welcome email one completed, let's check out to make sure it's all fine. Default commercial send, yes. Send to all subscribers, yes. No keywords, publication list is all subscribers. Perfect, so our email is looking pretty good. We'll go done. And that's our welcome email one built. Let's now jump in and build email number two. So email two, actually let's do email two using our content builder. So a different way of doing things. So we can jump in and we can go on content or I can navigate to my blue cloud here and go to our content builder, content builder. And once we're into the content builder, we can do exactly the same steps, but using this window. And that way we can use our journey builder. You can see straight away there, there's our first email. We'll go in and go create a new email message. So this one, we're gonna create, same thing again, a template using our blank page and select. And this will be our welcome email to content builder, leave it all as it is, and we'll go next. So what we can do here, let's have some fun with our personalization. Let's change, because this will be email two, right? So they receive this a day after their first welcome. So let's say we can do some dynamic subject lines. We can use this little lightning belt here. So we could say is the default subject line will be uh, Looking forward to seeing you soon at brand. If that is our default, but let's do some cool personalization. How about on our data extension, we personalize our subject line based on your preference. So if in your data extension, go into my folders here and my, there it is, welcome journey. Go into my DE and if, the subject line, if the user has a preference for dogs, so if dogs is set to true, then we'll make a new subject line. All right, so if the subject line is dogs, and how about, we're so glad to hear you like dogs. So if you like dogs, then we'll set it to dogs. However, let's also change this so it's only dogs. So if dogs is true and Cats is false. All right, we'll save that. So if you only like dogs, then so glad to hear you like dogs. Let's duplicate that and we'll say, we're so glad to hear you like cats. Done, and of course we'll flip around. So it's dogs is false and cats is true. So we're so glad to see that you like cats. Great, and this will be our cats rule. Save. This will change this to be our dogs rule. And now we'll do one more thing. Let's duplicate this once more and we'll call this one both. Okay, we're so good. We're so glad to hear you like cats and dogs. There we are, cats and dogs. And let's edit the rule to make sure that you have set it to be cats true and dogs true. All right, so now there's gonna be four different combinations of subject line. If you don't like cats or dogs, we just say, looking forward to see you soon. If you like dogs only, then we're so good to hear like dogs. If you like cats only, then we like to see cats. If you like both cats and dogs are true, then we're so glad to hear you like cats and dogs. How good. All right, save that subject line. You can see their little lightning bolt means we've got lots of options here. So now for our content, let's make some pages. So I'll drag a HTML block in here. And let's say hi again, Oops. hi again. We'll put that subscriber's first name again, of course. First name, hi again, first name, comma. Um, let's say something like, since you like, and we'll put something in here. So we'll put your pref in there. So since you like both something or something else, we think you'll like this, these products. All right. So let's then put a link. So we can say, we think you'll like these products. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a href equals, let's just go www.salesforce.com. All right, and it's gonna be a link to the products. So what we could do is salesforce.com question mark uh, skew equals, 
and will change the skew based on their preferences. So, we're so glad to hear you like this. And then we're going to send you to a different SKU and we'll call it the something products. So let's do some personalization now in a content in a script block to resolve if you like cats or dogs or both or neither. So script code block here and we'll say let's first of all get your preferences for cats. So we'll say set at uh, cats equals, and of course it's going to be the value of cats coming from the data extension. We'll do exactly the same thing for dogs, which will be the preference from dogs. All right, and then we're going to make ourselves a nice big if statement. So if cats equals true, then we're going to be setting your preference to something and then of course end if. But we also want to see if the preference for dogs is true. So if cats is true and within that if dogs is true okay, and then those then we know both cats and dogs so set at pref equals both. All right else if you do like cats and don't like dogs then your set pref will be equal to cats and if else this will be of course if your cats is false we'll do exactly the same here so if your cats is false and dogs is true then it's going to be preference is dogs and then it's neither if you don't like cats or dogs all right that's our if statement to check out what preference you are and what we can do as well is in this if statement, we can actually write some more copy. Since we're going to say, since you like cats, since you like dogs, since you like both cats and dogs, and since, hmm, maybe not since you like neither. Since you like neither, oh, actually, since you like neither cats or dogs, there you go. Oh, cats or dogs, we think you'll enjoy these products. All right, so based on them, it's going to go to those different SKUs. So if you like both cats and dogs, then set at SKU will be equal to the both SKU. If you just like cats, then we think you're going to go to the cat SKU. If you just like dogs, then you'll be going to the dog SKU. And if you don't like either, then you go to the neither SKU. So we can now see in our href link here, we want to put a SKU in. And we can't just drop the SKU value straight in. We do have to do some AMP script. So what we can do is go percent percent uh, equals and then V equals percent percent. All right. So we're going to have our link here and inside of it, it's going to output our SKU value just like that. And then of course the products. So we also want to put in here your preference. So just use the same V output here. Since you like preference, and then of course we'll put the SKU for uh, both is the SKU, cats and dogs products, neither cats or dogs products. All right, let's put that in. The pref will be just here. Cats or dogs preferences. Great, you can see it's gone blue because it is of course a hyperlink, that A ref there. So with that done, I'm going to put an alias on this tracking. So alias equals um, products. And that way we can also track it with that alias. And I think that should do it for this email so far. So let's test it out to make sure it is working. We'll go next and make sure that our subject line and also this link is going through perfectly. So our first record here is our triggered record who likes both cats and dogs. Hi again, since you like both cats and dogs with these products, if you hover over it, it does have in our SKU at the bottom there shows both. So it does like both. Great. If we go back one, this record only enjoyed, uh, only liked cats, not dogs. So hi again, Ken one. Since you like cats, so glad to hear you like cats and dogs. Hmm, got something wrong with the subject line there. But you can see, yeah, so the subject line's not working properly, but the one below here is. So now that we've tested it, we'll go back to our content and check out our subject line. What's gone wrong? 
So, whoops, we'll go here and edit. So I'm going to hear you like, oh, of course, hear you like dogs. So I'm going to hear you like cats. And I'm also going to hear like cats and dogs. All right, save. There we are, that's looking better. All three options. So we'll test it once more, making sure that the first record enjoyed cats. Cats, 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 good. And cats and dogs, both. All right, our email's looking good. Let's save it now. And we'll go back to our content builder. There it is. So back in Journey Builder now, let's go select message. You can choose this message and make sure we've picked up our email too. Email two, there it is. And we'll go summary. Default commercial, looking good, looking good. Tracked and all there, so done. There's welcome email two. Now that's in, we can now do the engagement split. So we'll click on our engagement split tile there, bringing up our window. We can choose which email we'll listen to. We're gonna be listening to email two, of course. So we'll choose that one. And what metrics? Well, we want it to be on clicks. So you can't see individual links in the clicks. Monitor all journeys in this email. All right. So let's then instead just say, have you clicked something? There's only one link in that email, so that's okay. We can just check to see if they have clicked on the email. If they have, we'll go done. And of course, it'll say, yes, they've clicked. So exit the journey quickly, and uh, removing their suppression. If they haven't though, let's send email number two. What we can do is since we have got email number two here, let's do our little trick again. We'll copy using our copy activity here, copy email two, and then drag and drop it in. Just like that. You can then delete that email, and here's our email two. So let's make sure that email two is looking good as you want it to. Once our tile here loads, and here we are. So email two looking good. We've got our email coming through. It'll have our subject lines. All right, let's maybe just preview and test it really quickly just to make sure it still looks good. We'll of course load up our content builder here. It's gonna choose our data extension and our record one of true and true. Hi, again, working since you like both, good. Since you like cats, even better. All right, back and done. So that's email two, of course, but email two re just so that in our analytics later on, we can see the difference between email to original and email to reminder. And that's it, that's our journey done. So what I do wanna do though, is to make sure this journey is working as expected. I'm not gonna wait for one day and three days. I'm gonna modify these down just for testing purposes, just so I can check it out for myself. So let's make it just one minute there. Make it one minute here, or three minutes there, sorry. And of course, three minutes there. So this is all said and done, the journey should only take six minutes to test. There we are, much easier. So I'll save my journey. Good. We'll do validate just to make sure it's all working. Perfect, so we do have a couple of warnings just based on those wait conditions, but that's not a problem. Of course, you will have a couple of minutes to click the email, so that's okay. We'll return to our draft and we'll activate our activity. This is version two now, which means that version one will stop entering new records in, and version two will be the new primary version of this journey. Okay, and you're on your way. So back to our journey, and now that it's working, let's go back to our cloud page and submit ourselves a new record. We don't have to change anything here. The entry event stays the same. Entry API ending in 44AE. You can see here in our journey builder, it's still 44AE. So even when you do republish new versions of the journey, it's not gonna change your entry event API. So with that in mind, let's now go onto our page and enter a new record in. This time I'm going to enter my name as Cam, last name as Robert. I'll put my real email address in to make sure I can get my email, of course. All right, and let's say I like dogs only, and then we'll go submit. All right, so that's our confirmation that it's all submitted properly. Let's now go back to our journey and make sure it's all looking good. Okay, so back in Journey Builder, we're still on version two. Let's now check out our entry results. And we have one and one, perfect. So back onto our journey. How far along has my record gone? It's not showing just yet. What I should do now though, is check out my inbox to see if the email has come through. Okay, and in my inbox, I can see I've now got my, hi there, Cam, welcome to the email list. Great, so if I jump back into my journey, 
have a look at my entry results. Of course, the record's gone through and hopefully we now see that yes, email one has been sent. Perfect. So hopefully in a minute's time, we'll then get email two coming through and I can choose to click or not click on that email. Perfect. So a minute later, we've now received the email number two. You can see there, hi Cam, since you like dogs, we think you'll enjoy this product. If I hover over my dog products, I can see that it's a tracked link. Awesome. Now I'll give this one a click in a second. And we did, of course, click dogs. I'll check on my list here. Yes, cats false, dogs true. So back on my email, I'll middle click to open a new tab up. And that's going to be clicking on my dog products. So back in my journey now, hopefully I'll see that in a second, if I check my entry results, one on one still, perfect. Hopefully in a second's time, it'll detect that I have in fact clicked that email. And so I should go down the one minute path. Let's find out. Okay, and a couple minutes later, my record finished the three minutes wait and went through the click engagement activity here. And of course, picked up that yes, I had clicked the link in email two. So of course, my record is now floating here on the minute one, going through and suppression no. Awesome. So if I now jump back into my data extensions, hopefully you'll find that that record is now showing as not being suppressed. So let's check it out by going back into data extensions and checking on that suppression DE. Now I did set those values to say that they were no longer suppressed and that the modified date would change as well. So let's have a look at my journey suppression. There I am, one record. And hopefully we'll see that my suppression status is false. All right, records and false last modified a few minutes ago. Awesome. Okay, and so now that we've tested our journey and we're happy with the results, we can now promote this to a live production journey. So I'll jump back in here again and let's do a new version of our journey. Once again, making our version three. And hopefully what we'll see is on version three, we can now go back in and change these weight conditions to be exactly what we need. And one thing I did notice as well as I was going through and making these emails, I actually forgot to do one thing in my email. I didn't use the redirect to function on the clickable link in email number two. So once our version three publishes here, I'll jump back into email two and we'll modify that link to make sure we use the redirect to function so that it is tracked correctly when you concatenate values within your marketing clouds links. Okay, so now we have our version three journey loaded. Let's jump in and modify our email number two. And we did make this one in content builder, but we can also edit it within our journey builder as well. I click on my tile, which brings up our email uh, window over the side here. Let's go to our drop down and let's edit the message. Once this loads up, we can modify that link to use the redirect to. So here we are here in the HTML block. And we'll scroll down and here is the piece we have to modify. So let's bring that up. We have to modify this piece here. So we can go to our redirect to AM script function. Simple Google search will find us where we are and I will use the AM script guide. Thanks to Elliot and Adam. So we've got here the redirect to function. And as you can see here, we simply use our href redirect to our link. So we can build our link up by concatenating our values together and then pasting the link in. So let's take our first value here to set the link. We'll go back into our journey builder into our page here. And let's make a link value. We'll put it into our AmScript block, making our link, which will be our salesforce.com where SKU equals. So we'll do salesforce.com where SKU is equal to, and then we're adding in the SKU link like that, where SKU is SKU, perfect. That's gonna be equal to link. Now, of course, go back into our documentation and the href has to be the redirect to link. So copy that back into our email and redirect to href equals redirect to. There we are. That done, let's go done editing. And of course we will save our email. There it is. Perfect. Back onto our main page here and done. And that's our email updated. We'll go back through here and that's what we'll do here as well for our wait. You could have signed up any time of the day. So we are gonna wait for one day, but let's wait until a reasonable time of the day to send you the welcome. Uh, Cause of course you receive the welcome straight away, but email two should come at a reasonable time of day. Let's extend this to be one day up until it gets to 9 a.m. in our local time. This way, if the user signed up at midnight, they won't get email number two at midnight the next day. They'll get it at 9 a.m. a few hours later. So we go done there, which means that all sends from here on out will be at 9 a.m. 
So if I change this three minutes back up to three days, that'll of course also be about three, uh, about nine o'clock in the morning, three days later. We'll of course change that one from three minutes to three days as well. And there we are, that's our journey all complete. So we'll of course save our journey and let's now make it into production by going activate. And done. Now we have a fully produced, ready to use welcome journey using our cloud page as a sign up page, receiving two welcome emails and of course a reminder if they failed to click it. Perfect, and you are on your way. And I hope you've enjoyed this end to end walkthrough of how to build a welcome journey using a cloud page, the REST API and journey builder. Of course, in production, you probably wouldn't use a cloud page as your subscription page. You'd use your own website with its own triggering APIs. But I hope for today's demo, you can see how easy it is to use that API to trigger records in real time into your journeys to create effective welcome campaigns. If you have enjoyed this end to end walkthrough and you'd like to see more of them, then please give the video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.